Fiber, come here. Come here. Up here. Come here. Here. Come here. Right here. Come here. Bring your butt. Come here. Bring your butt. Good girl. This is Piper. Piper is my very first dog. She's five years old, and today is actually the fifth anniversary of when we rescued her. Piper's hobbies include snoozing, begging for treats, playing tug of war, and last but not least, playing fetch. Piper actually likes to play fetch so much that sometimes my arm gets sore from throwing the ball to her. So today, to celebrate her fifth gotcha day, I'm gonna make something so that I can play fetch with her for longer, and in true modern hobbyist fashion, I'm gonna over-engineer the shit out of it. Let's get started. Let's go, let's go. Now, I know that there are already solutions out there to help with throwing a ball for your dog, but I wanted to make something special for Piper. So I went all the way back to my childhood for inspiration. When I was a kid, I loved playing with Hot Wheels. I had tons of cars and I even had several of those track shooters that would use two spinning wheels to launch cars around the track. The car shooter basically works like a baseball or softball pitching machine. And to be honest, I'm not sure why my brain went to the Hot Wheels shooter first, considering I also played baseball, but I knew that that was the general route that I wanted to go, so I got started designing. Now, I don't always show the code for my projects because it can get a little bit too technical for a 10 minute video, but I wanted to for this project so I could show you how easy it can be to add Arduinos to your projects. This code just reads an input from a potentiometer, maps it to a value between zero and 180, and then outputs that value to the speed controllers. And that's it, that's all the code that was needed for this project, and it came out to only about 40 lines of actual code. Now, most of the time for projects like this, I start out by building the circuit out on a breadboard with some jumper wires, so that I can quickly and easily test out my code. Once I've got a proof of concept working and I fixed any bugs in my code, I usually move on to a more durable solution by transferring the circuit to a piece of perf board. This type of circuit is usually more than good enough for my projects, but if I'm feeling adventurous or feeling like taking my project to the next level, I'll design a PCB and have it actually manufactured professionally. And that's where today's video sponsor PCBWay comes in. PCBWay is a company that specializes in prototyping and small volume production, making it the perfect one-stop shop for all your do-it-yourself project needs. Using their online tool, you can upload a gerber file, select your design settings, and get 10 custom PCBs for only $5. Now, even if you don't have a need for a custom circuit board, PCBWay might still be able to help you out as they also provide 3D printing, CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding services. All you need to do is upload a 3D model, select your options, and of course pay for it. Make sure to check them out at the link in the description below so you can take your electronics projects to the next level. Huge thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to the build. For the electronics in this project, I decided to go with an Arduino Nano as the microcontroller, as they're pretty cheap and they come with more than enough inputs and outputs for this project. And I'll have them controlling two brushless DC motors, which I actually stole from a failed drone project I did several years ago. To power this project, I'll be using a 7.4 volt LiPo battery along with a power distribution board to provide voltage to the speed controllers as well as the Arduino Nano. Now, even though LiPo batteries are often the battery of choice for drones and RC cars, they do also come with several risks. So you need to make sure that you're taking proper steps to handle your LiPo batteries safely. In case you're interested in using a LiPo battery in one of your projects, I'll have some links in the description below for some information on how to properly handle and store your LiPo batteries.
All right, I finally got this thing all put together and all that's left to do is fire it up and see how it does. So unsurprisingly, the first version of this project did not work very well. For one thing, the wheels themselves did not want to stay attached to the motors. There was quite a bit of vibration, which I think was the result of the wheels themselves not being perfectly balanced. And they ended up just shaking themselves right off the 3D printed hub. I redesigned the hubs a bit to have a hub cap to help hold the wheels on. And this helped to keep them from flying off the motors, but it didn't fix the other more pressing issue. It turns out that the brushless motors I'm using don't have anywhere near enough torque to actually launch the ball. Since the motors are intended for a drone, I was hoping that the high RPM would be enough, but the wheels basically just stop the second the ball touches them. To get around this, I decided to switch the motors out with a set of brushed motors that are actually intended for an RC racing car. And they actually came with the necessary speed controllers as well. So with the new motors picked out, I went back to the drawing board and redesigned the entire project with the new motors and speed controllers in mind. All right, so Dog Ball Launcher Mark II is assembled and ready to go, but I found another issue with this design. Now that the wheels no longer fly off of the hubs when they get up to speed, the tires have actually started flying off the wheels instead. Now, these wheels are super cheap and they actually came with an electronics kit I got a few years back, so they're definitely not meant for high-speed applications. First off, they have a sort of sticky foam lining on the inside to help the wheels maintain their shape but it's not evenly distributed around the wheel, so it causes quite a bit of vibration at higher RPMs. Secondly, the rubber of the tire is actually pretty stretchy, so it ends up just expanding at higher speeds and sliding off the wheel, essentially turning it into a tiny rubber Frisbee. So in a last ditch effort to get this project working, I decided to just 3D print the wheels myself in hopes of reducing the vibrations and eliminating the possibility of getting a flying spinning rubber tire to the face. And here it is, Dog Ball Launcher Mark III. And there you have it. That is my super over-engineered dog ball launcher that my dog is actually terrified of. And to be honest, I don't blame her. Unfortunately, this project didn't turn out quite as well as I had hoped. I was able to generate enough torque and speed with the new motors, but no matter what I did, I just couldn't get the wheels to actually grip on the ball well enough to really launch it. In fact, every time I push the ball through, I can smell burnt rubber from the wheels just slipping on the ball. So in the future, I might need to redesign it for some better wheels or try to make some of my own. 
This project might not have worked out, but in the end, it was a ton of fun to make and there were a lot of engineering problems that I was able to overcome. So I'll chalk this one up as a semi-success. Let me know in the comments below if you have any ideas for how I could improve this design. Otherwise, for now, it looks like I'll be playing fetch the good old fashioned way. Lastly, make sure to check out PCBWay if you need any PCB manufacturing, 3D printing, or CNC services for your next project. And don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe if you wanna see more awesome videos like this. Otherwise, that's all for now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.